Hello and welcome to another Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a look at some of the TOA analog audio solutions that are available at Dynamic CCTV. Dynamic CCTV primarily offer some of the TOA analog horn speakers like we can see uh, here and also analog amplifiers which can be connected directly to the RC outputs of a DVR or an MVR. They can be used to debate two-way audio locally or from a remote location as a deterrent or a way of, of warning any intruders to leave the property. It can also be linked to third-party equipment where pre-recorded warning messages can be played as well. So we currently stock a range of these horn speakers. The main difference between them is the power output or the maximum power output capabilities. This unit I've got here is a, an SC630M, 30 being the rated power, so it's a 30 watt horn speaker. There is also 15 and 10 watt equivalent speakers available which are slightly smaller in size due to the less power output. What you probably didn't know or may not have known is that these units, although they'll deliver a maximum of 30 watts, they can actually be tapped down to deliver less than that as, as and when required. There is a few advantages to doing that. One is obviously the unit only emits the sound pressure level that is required for the given area so it doesn't overpower that area and the other is that the total power output can be reduced and therefore the required amplifier or rated output of an of your required amplifier can also be reduced saving potential money on on the install with this particular unit here we can see there on the rear we've got a small switch here which moves between um, the different impedances within the actual speaker itself now generally the, the lower the impedance impedance setting the higher the power rating will be the higher the impedance setting the lower the power output will be so basically two power settings there there's a 70 volt and a 100 volt setting each impedance will give you a rated power for what each one of those input voltages they are 100 volt or 70 volt line units so they've got quite high impedance levels generally the advantage of a 100 volt or a 70 volt line would be that you can achieve much longer transmission distances due to the higher voltage generally results in a much lower signal level so you get longer distances through your transmission cable what you need to do is, is generally choose which line voltage you want to use. It generally is good practice to only use one of those line voltages on the back of the amplifier as a, there's a risk of causing damage to the amplifier if you use both the 70 and 100 volt lines together. So we've got an amplifier here which I can just quickly grab. Bear with me because it does weigh quite a lot. But you can see there on the rear we've got our, our 70 volt and our 100 volt connections there and also a common. So the two wire cable would generally go across either the 70 and the 100 volt line and also the comment to give a circuit, a continuity circuit and obviously achieve your sort of audio, required audio on its output. So generally you would select your speaker based on the required power level for the area that you want it to be audible over. Now there is a rule of thumb in terms of being able to calculate this. Generally sort of noted that your output level should be between 5 and 10 decibels higher than any background noise and between 15 and 20 decibels higher than any foreground noise, foreground music as such. So what we need to do is calculate what the dB level will be at the required distance for the, for, for the output. So what we can do is, first of all, during your, one of your site surveys, it would be good practice to just take a, a reading of any background noise or foreground noise in the area that the speaker is going to be located. What you would tend to be good practice is to slowly walk away from where the speaker is going to be located to the furthest point you wish it to be audible. And you can take a dB reading there of any background noise or foreground noise that may be apparent. Now, one good way of doing that is through an app. You can download quite a few different um, sound pressure level readers from the App Store. I've got one here, which I can just quickly show you there, which is running. You can see that it's also given us a reading of the current dB level, obviously, as I speak. You can see the actual dB level is getting higher. And there where I paused, it dropped down to about 24. And when I talk, it increases to about 63 or so. So that's a good little tool that you can use at the furthest location to get an idea of what the dB level is. So if you were at about 63 decibels and you wanted background noise and you wanted a speaker that would be suitable to sound above that background noise, you know that you'd need to be between 5 and 10 decibels higher than that. So let's say 65 decibels, you'd want to be around about the 75 dB mark. So that's the first calculation that, that you would need to make. 
After that, it's a case of selecting appropriate horn speaker or appropriate power output for your horn speaker. This can be done through some handy charts which are actually available on our website, but generally every horn speaker will have a, a dB level for one watt power input against one meter away from the actual horn. And as you move away from the horn speaker, that dB level will drop, but as you increase the wattage, it'll go up. So there's a, some handy charts available on our website, which the locations you should be able to see on the screen now, they'll actually tell you what dB level you're going to achieve at different distances for various wattage inputs across the range of horn speakers that we offer. And that will allow you to correctly select the correct either horn speaker or power setting on the back of the horn speaker. What you can do, obviously, if you've got varying results across varying areas of install, can obviously tap different horns to be at different levels. So one location only required a 15 watt output. There's nothing wrong with setting one horn speaker at 670 ohms, and then another horn speaker in a different location needs a higher output at a lower impedance. That's not a problem. The only thing we have to bear in mind is not to exceed the total or 80% of the total power capabilities of the amplifier. So we can actually use the impedance settings to calculate power levels, which we'll show you how to do in a bit. But that's the rule of thumb there, and obviously calculate various different power ratings. And obviously amplifiers, you know, it can save it can save money in the required amplifier, an 80% total output. So you can vary if you, depending on what power output horn you needed. If you required three horns running at 30 watts to give you a power rating of 90 total, you would probably need to look at a 120 watt amplifier so that you're not exceeding that 80% level. If through calculations we found that we only need to run the horn speakers at 15 watts, that would drop our total power rating to 45, which would mean we could look at something around about 60 watt rating for our amplifier. When you wire these things back to the, the back of the, the terminals on the back of the amplifier, there's two ways in which you can do it, which is completely up to the positioning of the speakers and the locations, but you can either star connect them which is an individual cable coming back from each horn speaker, or you can daisy chain them. Daisy chain involves obviously looping out of one horn speaker into the next and so on. They kind of act as a bunch of resistors in parallel, if you like, looping out of each other. So they're the two methods in which you can connect the actual horn, horn speakers. You can even mix and match a daisy chain formation with a star connect formation. Again, as I said earlier, the only main rule of thumb is not to exceed 80% of the total power rating of the amp. Based on that, I think what I'll do is show you this handy piece of kit which I've got here, which is also a tour product. This is the ZM104A. It's an impedance meter. Looks pretty much like an old school analog multimeter. Obviously it is an analog device. But it's a very handy product in terms of being able to calculate what the impedance level is of speaker lines going back to the amplifier. If you weren't quite sure what was connected or what the power impedance settings were on each one, this will actually give us a reading on here so we know exactly what our impedances are and that we can then work out the power levels as well. So generally what you would do with this device is you'd first of all, you'd zero it. So we've got a zero uh, ohm setting. We can do that by pushing this button in here and then just carefully adjusting the adjuster on the left so we get a zero ohm setting there. That basically gets the device ready for measuring and obviously giving accurate measurements, accurate results on screen. Once we've done that, it's a case of attaching these small clips to the cables. Now what you may be able to see on the back of this unit is we've actually got it set to the 330 ohm setting on the back using this switch here. So we should read something similar on the screen when we connect these up. You will hear a slight sort of humming from the unit, which is normal when you attach this test instrument. There we go. And you can see on the screen there we've got it's reading about 300. Obviously there will be a little bit of tolerance above and below on this meter, but you can see there we've got a, a reading of about 300 ohms, more or less whereabouts we want to be. I'll just unplug this so that we're not deafening each other. So based on that impedance reading there, it is possible to actually calculate the power that this unit is, is going to take at that impedance. And we, we can do that by using basic Ohm's law calculation, which is used for everyday voltage and current calculating. Ohm's law generally is V equals I times R. So we can work out a single value if we've got two of the others. So by covering the other one up, you can see what you have to do there. V equals I times R, R equals V over I, I equals V over R. So in terms of 
first of all working out what the signal will be. We know what our line voltage is going to be because we've chose that earlier, it's going to be 70 or 100, so we'll use 100 volts for the purpose of, of this little test. We know that our resistance or impedance is 330, so to work out the signal we would divide 100 volts by 330 ohms and that would give us a signal of 0.3 amps. That obviously equates this into current but it is actually a signal that we're talking about. And once we've got the signal strength, we can then use another equation, which is a power equation, similar to Ohm's law, which is P equals V times I. Voltage again, we know is 100 volts, and the signal we know is 0.3 of an amp. So 100 times 0.3 will actually give us 30 watts, which is basically where we are on the 100 volt line, 330 ohm setting on here. So just by reading the impedance from this particular unit, it is possible to then take that impedance and through those calculations work out what the total power requirement is for that speaker array or speaker, whatever it may be. And that's that's quite important, not just for actually selecting the required amplifier, but also protecting the amplifier before you connect the terminals up to the rear. If you connect the wrong or too much power to an amplifier, you know, it can cause catastrophic damage to the amplifier. It can irreversible catastrophic damage if you apply an overload source to it. So it is important that you, you know before you connect the terminals that that amplifier can handle this load. So that's basically how to calculate your power. And what we can quickly just do is show what we would get if we did connect two speakers in a daisy chain formation. So if I loop these two together, as I mentioned earlier, they do behave a little bit like resistors in parallel. When you've got resistors in parallel, it isn't just the case of adding the two values together because they're not in series because they're in parallel you actually the resistance actually drops so if we put two equal sized horn speakers together in parallel at the same power rate or impedance rate and what should what va the value we should get should be ha exactly half the value of a single of the impedance of a single speaker so obviously not 660 ohms which would be the equivalent of adding two together but actually half the value of a single horn so if I connect these up again to here. We can see on the meter that reading there that we're actually getting around about 165 or 160, which is about half the value of a single horn speaker, which would then allow us to, using the previous calculation, work out the signal and then also add the power as well from there, which would be um, obviously because of the two of them together, which would be 60 watts total power, half the impedance. So you would be looking at 100 divided by 165. And then on from there, we would have a, a larger signal, double the signal, about 0.6 of an amp going through, uh, which would equate to 100 times that 0.6 and obviously 60 watts. So double the power from that. So just some little hints and tips in terms of selecting the correct speakers and also calculating the impedance and correct power before you connect the units up. And also the importance of a little device like this, which is the ZM104A. You can get this from Dynamic CCTV and it, it is a very useful product and one that you will find yourself using on more than one occasion. So I hope you found this video of interest and I would like to say any more information on the, the Toa audio products that you've seen today in this video, and then please contact your account manager or Dynamic CCTV Direct. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.